Hello, and welcome to the third episode of Healthy Knitting. Today is August 21st, 2013, and I'm a day late. Um, I'll tell you about that in New and Good. So, first, let me do thank yous. Oh, I think I didn't say this. This is Rosie. <laughs> anyway, I'm a little tired, uh, which you'll find out more about in New and Good as well. So, First off, thank yous. Today I would like to thank my friends who uh, one may listen to the podcast, the other not. Um, my friends have gardens. Most of my friends do, which is fantastic. And I don't, I have too much shade and um, too many wild animals around my house. Deer and rabbits and woodchucks. And they all like to eat gardens, so I did not do one. Um, anyway, I have had fresh tomatoes, string beans, um, today I got some more tomatoes and some Italian eggplants, which I've never seen before, so they don't look typical. They're your normal average eggplants you see in the store, so I'm going to show those to you later when we hit the kitchen. Um, really interesting. And zucchini, and um, my god, it's just lovely. So local homegrown is fantastic. Um, oh, and yeah, okay. So what is new and good? New and good is I just got back into town uh, last night at about midnight, which is why I'm a little tired today and which is why I'm late because I was on the road yesterday and I couldn't record. Um, I had to do a video, <laughs> no, like a real video, <laughs> um, down at Myrtle Beach at Hell Yes Studios. And it was a really interesting experience, I have to say. You know, teleprompter and all that kind of stuff. So pretty cool. And um, they can do a lot of editing, which I don't really know how to do yet. But uh, they told me that all I need to do is... Uh, Google iMovie tutorials and I will learn how to do everything. So maybe one day these podcasts will look a little better than they do. Um, so so that's my new and good. Oh, I have another new and good. Well, you can probably see over here are three of the sweaters that need to be ripped out. And they're all the big ones. So guess what? I did the small one. I took it apart. Oh my gosh, what a pain. Uh, this, and I didn't look up the yarn again, and I meant to, and I forgot. This is, um, I know it's Brooks Brothers. So am I saying that right? Brooks Farms? I will put it in the show notes. I apologize, and I'm not going to try to figure this out looking it up on the computer while we're recording, because then I'm going to lose the screen and I don't know where we're at. Anyway, I did make this into a little shrug, and I wasn't wearing it. Uh, even from the day I wore it, I don't think I ever, the day I made it, I don't think I ever wore it out, um, which is a shame because it's really nice yarn and it's very pretty, lots of nice colors. Um, I did wind up losing some of the yarn, but that's okay. Uh, it's not like I lost all of it at least, so now I can do something different with this. I'm not sure what to do. I don't know if you can see it. When I started reskeining it, all of the colors it's so dark. I have lights on everywhere, but the lights are weird in my house, and there's light coming from wrong angles, so... Anyway, a lot of the colors started lining up, lining up, lining up, and then all of a sudden they shifted. I'm like, well, that's really... Oh, have a kitty. Here's Doin. She's coming to say hello again. She likes to be on the podcast. Well, oh, she's so black, you can't see her. Um, so the colors were lining up, and then they stopped lining up, and I thought that was kind of strange, so I'm not sure if I did something, or if something different happened. There was no knots or anything. You would think with yarn dyed like that, it would all match. I'm not a yarn dyer, so I don't... Oh, that's what I forgot. <gasps> I was going to pull something else out. Maybe I maybe I will, and I'll stop this when it comes time. Um, because the stripey madness with the socks these days is killing me. Really, it, you podcasters showing all those beautiful socks is just... I love it, all the stripes. Anyway, I'll get back to this. So this is done. So one at least is finished. I'm probably not going to do another one for another week because that really gave me a headache. Uh, the yarn, I think there's mohair in there, so it was a bit sticky. Let's just say it was not a fun hour or so of me undoing that yarn. So I only did it because the yarn's nice. <laughs> if it had been not so nice yarn. Uh, it would have been off to, well, no longer Goodwill, because I found out Goodwill really doesn't give all of the money to the organization. Some people are paid pretty fat, so 
I'm going to start donating to other organizations um, for my donatable goods. Anyway, so other than that, things go off to the donation place. I just, it's a lot of time and effort to reclaim things when it's already finished and somebody else could use it. Those two, three, not so, or yeah, three, not so much because they're not really wearable. So anyway, so that's new and good. Um, on and off the needles. Oh my gosh. So I had to go to Mer Myrtle Beach, which meant I had airplane flying. So guess what? I finished my socks. Yes, there are two. Um, they're not exactly the same. I did the best I could to figure out what I did with, for the second one as I did for the first one. And so you can kind of see they're not, they're not exactly perfect, but they do fit. One's a little bit tighter. The toes are different. I don't know what I did. I only had like, what, two stitches at the end of this toe for a Kitchener? I don't know. This one I think I had seven. But it was a, getting to be a little bit fiddly and I was getting really tired and it was late on the plane and I just wanted them off and done. So they're finished, they're wearable. I know they look funny um, because they're so tiny in the toe, but really that stocking that stretches out to match and I put them on and they're so comfortable. They really do snug right around my foot. They fit perfectly. It's a bit of a... I don't think anybody else had this trouble with jaywalkers. I think it was just me. So maybe I misread the pattern, which is highly likely because I have a tendency to go, I know what they're saying. I'll just do what I think they're saying without actually reading everything properly all the way through. And then halfway done, I'm like, why is this not working? <laughs> because I didn't follow the directions. Fail. So anyway, those are finished, which is super exciting. I'm so happy. <laughs> that project has been on the needles for so long, it's terrible. Oh, and hold on, I'm writing stuff down because I wanted to tell you, I, last time I started talking about things and then I forgot what I wanted to say. So I have notes. <laughs> um, I knit these on my signatures. And see, these are the five inch ones. This is the Harmony Knit Picks. See how much longer those are? By an inch. These are six inches, these are five inches. I purposely did get the five inch because I wanted them to be smaller because I felt sometimes that I was clunking along and things were just not flowing so good. But really, socks fall off of these a lot and I drop stitches and unless I'm really careful, um, things just, because it is slippery. I mean, it's not slippery like plain old metal needles. Sometimes they can just fly right out. These do stick because of this, but it's just because some of the stitch patterns are so close to the edge, you know? So I think if I were to get double points again, I would not get the five inch ones just to get a little bit more leeway room so I'm not dropping stitches all the time. But I do have a full set of these um, that I love very much. So. I'm not sure if I will get another pair, but if something happened to these and I needed to get more, I would definitely pick up six inches again because that was really just a pain in the neck, especially um, with this yarn. I used Regia Trekking XXL, and this has many plies to it, and this is many colors. I don't know if you can see that. And so with the really super sharp yarn, and dropping stitches and they're tiny, I was picking up just one piece of the ply. Oh, and this is another thing. I like cookie eye socks because they fit me nice. They're entertaining, they're beautiful. Yes, they take me to a place where I need to concentrate and I can't do anything else but you know pay attention to what I'm doing. I seem to make less mistakes with that kind of knitting than I do with something that's a two pattern repeat. I think my brain just shuts down and it's like, oh, well, this is so simple. You can just keep going and going and going and you don't really have to pay attention. And that's what happens. I don't really pay attention. And then I make all these mistakes and I've had to go back. And there's a double decrease here uh, to make the ridge. And uh, I, when I had to back out of that row a couple times, I would, it would get stuck and I'd drop things. It was really messy. So I'm not sure I really... I like how the yarn holds up, but I don't really like knitting with Trekking XXL. It's just very splitty, and these are super sharp, so I was splitting right through it like crazy. And I do have a lot of yarn left, so I have another 
bit of XXL and gray, so I might meld the two together and make some kind of like um, heels and toe on one sock and then the body with the other color and then vice versa so that I could get another pair of kind of mismatchy matchy socks with what I have left so I don't like to waste yarn it's kind of yeah you know. anyway what else did I want to say about that yeah I think that was it so yeah now on to the other project that I was working on which is the Stella jacket from French Curl Knits and the jacket is, in case you didn't see before, this one right here, this, these fingers. This still messes me up with the reverse. It doesn't do it on my camera, it just automatically reverses it, but on this one it switches and this is kind of easier to use since I don't have to stop it every five minutes. So I am, I am at the end. And had I not had to go away, I would have had this done. But I wasn't, just see the size of this, I wasn't going to bring this on a plane. <laughs> it was already getting hot on my lap at Knitting Thursday. Um, hang on. Doing, you're sitting on it, sweetheart. Hang on, the kitty cat sitting on the yarn. Okay, baby. Come here. Um, next time you see this, it will probably be an off the needles. So I've completed the side. Oh, this is really throwing me off. This is which hand? This hand. I've completed the, I don't know how you guys do this. This is difficult. <laughs> completed the side uh, pieces and attached the sleeves. Yeah, I don't think I even got that far before. Did I have the sleeves attached? I don't remember. Um, I've got everything done except for the collar and then I have to bind off, which is not much really, and then I have to bind off in Pico, which you know will take me forever. It's not much on each side, but still it's a uh, Pico edge. Oh, yes, and I wasn't paying attention because I had gone down a size on these the needles I was using for this pattern. I was able to use my higher, higher sharps. Oh, and I don't have the regular ones here. I was gonna grab them to show you the difference. They are just right over there, but I don't wanna get up. So can you see how sharp these are? Oh, where are my, you know what? I am gonna get up really quick. I'm gonna stop this though, because I don't want you to have to go through that. Hold on. Okay, we're back. I am not doing that again. I had to wait <laughs> quite a long time for iMovie to go and stabilize everything. And and then I was thinking, okay, I'll just do this clip with my camera, which is the battery's uh, charged, but it doesn't focus close up. I have fixed the focus issue, but it's still, I can't like zoom in on you. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know why. Um, anyway, so uh, oh yeah, the needles. Yeah. Sorry, I am here. I just, you know, getting in at midnight and having to do all this stuff kind of took me a little while here to get focused today. So anyway, what I wanted to show you was the difference between the Haya Haya Sharps, the Haya Haya Regulars, and what um, signatures look like. I'm trying to find something to place behind it. Maybe just my hand will work. Okay, so the blue one is the signature tip. The one next to it is the Haya Haya Regular, and this is the Haya Haya Sharp um, over here. I'm gonna stick it right next to now the signature. So you can see there, it's not really showing very well. It's over here, uh, here, it's backwards. So they're very comparable in being as sharp, I think, the Haya Haya and the signature. And this is the regular, which is, it's not bad. Uh, it's just a little bit duller. What I don't like about the signature needles is that this color really messes me up when I'm knitting, especially if I'm knitting something that's the same color as this or it gets uh, blended in with this. It kind of drives me a little crazy. I like to see what I'm doing. So, um, these actually, the high highs I've had trouble with these coming unscrewed, which is kind of why I like the signatures all in one because I don't have to worry about it coming apart. They're all together. Um, but I have not had to readjust these since I put them on and I knit, uh, I think ever since all of the um, seed stitch panel and everything had to be done in sevens. That's why it needed to be switched needles. You've got to go down one size. and. I love them. 
I I'm really think I'm going to wind up getting the, the set of the sharps as well. Um, because I do have a, I have both sets of the regulars, the small set and the big set, um, because I replaced them with my Knit Picks ones. Yeah, it did cost more, but uh, the Knit Picks ones were so heavy. And these are, these are the little tips. See how much shorter these are? I think these are four inches. And these are the five inch ones, and they end about here. So I wound up getting the fives to see how I liked it, because sometimes I tend to bend over just a little bit with the shorter ones. Um, the way I hold my knitting. So I think that I'm going to wind up getting the five inch sharps so I don't keep having to replace my cords. So anyway, that's that's my little uh, review of the needle tips. And um, yeah, so I am almost done with the Stella, Stella jacket. Yay! And it'll probably get really cold soon <laughs> so I can wear it. Um, so yeah, that'll be done next week. So if you remember my little pact, I said if I finish something, I get to start something new. Well, I'm not working on that headband right now. I think that's gonna go in a timeout. Uh, I have two projects that I wanna do and I did get that other thing while I was waiting and waiting and waiting to, that I wanted to show you before this that I forgot. So uh, next up is uh, I finished a pair of socks, so I get to make another pair of socks. And although I think I said I wanted to do just a plain one, well, I told you I got the books from the library and I showed you uh, knitting from the center out. Well, there is a pair of socks in here that is really interesting to me. So let me see if I can find them here. Um, it's this, my finger's on it, okay. It's these, you start from the heel and you work your way around. So. I will, I'm going to review this book today and I will show you more of that pattern as we get to it because it'll take me forever to find it in here. Um, I'm going to use Regia hand dye effect and the color is, um, oh, they don't have names. Archat? A shot? A shot? A shot? I'm butchering that. It's peach and gray and uh, very, various shades of peach with various shades of gray. So it's colorful. Um, I'm really ramped up about everybody's stripy socks. And I, I know these are not stripy stripy in a way like those are stripy stripy. But it will give me a little bit of a fix of that for right now. Um, and these were kind of stripy stripy, but it's still not, it's not really the same. So eventually what I would like to do is something I'll talk to you about in a minute when we get over to spinning. Um, so that's next up on the needles, but I'm going to finish that Stella jacket. So I get to make something else new. So what I've decided to do, and I've had the yarn picked for this for a while, is this jacket there. I'm sorry. I keep getting everything confused with the right and left. Uh, this is Vogue Knitting Spring Summer 2008 and this is just a cute cotton jacket and it's knit sideways so interesting construction and I figured I would be able to make that pretty quickly. Summer, I mean it's still summer here, it's only the end of, oh I thought it was, <laughs> I almost thought it was the 14th, it's the 21st already. Uh, so another week has passed that I'm not really aware of but you know I can still wear it. It's, it it's okay, I should be able to make that pretty fast. And I'm going to use these cute little buttons that I got at Rhinebeck. Now, every time I go to Rhinebeck, I pick up these cute little buttons and I never know what I'm gonna use them for, but I bought two of these. And I think they would look great as the two buttons here. Um, and they look nice with the yarn. It's just a plain, a plain yarn, so nice little buttons would jazz that up a bit. This is Lynx yarn from Fibra Natura, and it's an organic cotton and it's a worsted weight. And they discontinued this yarn. It's, can you see that? It's a chain, like a chain construction, which I really love. I've made a few things with this. I've made a, a regular jacket and I've made a stuffed pig. Stuffed pig is so cute. Um, and it worked great for both of those projects. I kind of like to make stuffed toys out of um, cotton because they can go in the washing machine. And, um, you know, then I now have to worry about, oh, I need to make that out of superwash. And 
I don't have a lot of superwash in my stash. Pretty much the only superwash I have is Madeline Tosh. Um, I just don't buy it normally. I buy regular wool because I don't make a lot of things for other people and I wash my own clothes so I don't really have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, for cotton, I think for baby stuff is great because it can just go in the wash. It's not going to pill. Um, I get, well, not this construction. I haven't seen this pill. This stuff is great. And that, it just makes me crazy that you get a nice yarn and then it's discontinued. Um, I don't get it. So especially this construction, it's really nice. It's nice to knit with. Um, obviously it's not splitting because it's in a chain. And the colors are nice in the, the palette. It was nice colors. I bought it at Webb's. Um, they had a big closeout sale because Webb's does that. They buy things that um, the companies no longer want. They discontinue and then buy them and they give you a really good discount on it. But I still don't get why it's doing was discontinued. Um, so those two projects are up next. I'm just looking to see if there was anything else. Oh, I can't remember the, the nice woman who makes these buttons up at Rhinebeck. I had her card at one point and now I don't have it anymore. Um, if I think about it and I can find it easily, I will put it in the show notes. I know other podcasters have um, shown her card before. Um, cute buttons. I, and I, it's just, I just love buttons and they're beautiful. They're nice colors. Um, and I've used quite a few of them already, but you know, I do buy them and I don't know what I'm going to make with them. And then eventually I find something. So I try not to get too crazy with the buttons, but one year I did and I bought a lot of buttons because they're fun. Um, okay. So that's it for on and off the needles. Next, we're going to talk about spinning and this is kind of old spinning because I did not do any spinning this week. As you can tell, I made some pretty good progress on that jacket and, um, the socks pretty much was just on the way home yesterday. There wasn't much left to do with those. It was just a matter of sitting down and doing it. So that's why I get upset with myself for not, uh, you know, getting it done. But I did actually wash the yarn that I had shown you last week and it did puff up a bit. This is the llama from Wellspring Farms. So I had two different, uh, I almost said two different sheep, two different llamas. And I was hoping to get more of like a DK weight well, I wound up, I just counted it, I wound up getting about 266 yard, six yards out of this four ounces of llama. It's not sporing at all. There's no give to this. Um, so this llama fiber doesn't have any sporiness in it, even though it was spun in a more um, woolen manner. Um, it's not consistent. I had a lot of trouble, It's and it was not them. Oh, I'm losing some light here. The fiber prep was great and I've I've never had any problems with fiber prep, but I think I squished it. And so one of the, the bumps was really hard to pull apart and so it wasn't even at all. And so my my spinning wasn't very even. Um, so I have some, some thin pieces and some thicker pieces, but it's going to go into a shawl. I need to go rummaging through my, my um, hand spun stash and see what else I have and match it to a pattern um, because I really would like to spin with some hand spun. Spin with some hand spun. Knit with some hand spun. I am not with it today, really. Uh, okay, so the one thing that I did want to go get and show you, which I did, is this. And this is Cheviot wool and I bought 8 ounces at Little Barn at Rhinebeck last fall. And it's this beginners wool carded cheviot wool and I bought this specifically so that I could make socks so I have eight ounces here and this is a three ply and it's pretty fine it spun beautifully it was lovely to work with and I'm not sure if I'm going to run back because I'm not sure if I'm gonna be here in October but um, I would definitely get more of that it it's it's not coarse it's still smushy, it's not puffed up, and I did wash it, but I think it's going to wear really well. Um, I spun it um, worsted so that I, would, I wouldn't have um, any a lot of poofiness. I wanted it to be very durable. And I was thinking that maybe I could dye up some stripy socks for myself. So that would be really fun because everybody's got these really pretty stripey socks going on and they're just so beautiful and I have dye and it's not like I can't do it um, 
I saw some project, some um, YouTube videos on how to, or tutorials on how to do stripey socks. And I knew you needed some kind of warping instrument to wrap the yarn so you're not like making these big huge loops. And it doesn't seem like it's that complicated. I just don't know if I have the time right now. I have a lot of stuff going on, but perchance I get some time and I'm feeling creative and I want to dye and make some stripy socks. I was thinking of doing this with that because I did want to dye it anyway because it's white and I don't really need white socks. I have cats and it'll just not be white very soon after I wear them. So that's it for spinning. So what I'm going to do now is review knitting from the center out and Danielle Juhas. I'm not sure. I'm probably saying her name wrong. Um, but this book caught my eye at the, um, at the library and I just wanted to show you this, this book, I didn't make anything yet, but I am going to make those, those socks. Um, they have everything in sections so that you can see the different sections that they have. There's six different sections of types of um, projects. So they're all categorized. So, you know, it's not like everything's all over the place. And um, I thought it was a nice layout. The pictures are, there's bigger pictures, there's close-up pictures. And some of the projects I thought were very interesting, but I might not necessarily make them for me. Um, I thought this was really cute. This is a little kid's hat. So here's a little cone head. I thought it was adorable. Oh, I'm probably showing you too much that I should show you. Um, I might cut that out. So anyway, I'm gonna start right here, just in case. So how do people do this? Okay. Here's the little kid's hat, which I thought was adorable. And then she takes it one step up and here's another, a different, a different hat. Same, same thing, but like a little different. So I thought that'd be a cute little gift. Kids like to wear goofy hats. <laughs> and then here's the next one with um, turning it into a witch's hat. So you could make uh, a very nice Halloween gift for your little child. Um, there are other hats here, which I thought these were super cute. I don't know if the sizing on here is for, um, these look like they are they're just for children, just 15 inch circumference. And they're super cute. I should have a little one with the little baby on it. Isn't that cute? Doesn't look very complicated, but just look like a nice little cap. These are all worked from the center out, so everything is done from the from the center. Um, hats, I've only seen a couple done that way. So interesting construction, which I like is challenging. Um, here are some Red Millis slippers. Now they look a little different, not on a foot. They don't look as appealing there to me, but the next picture where they're actually wearing the slippers, they definitely look like they, uh, where is it? Like they look a lot better than the square toed thing that you look at the other part. So those are super cute, and I thought I would give those a shot. There's another pair of socks in here that's just a toe up, so, you know, but that's, there's not anything unusual about that, but I thought this one, the heel out, oh, when you keep doing this, from the heel around is really interesting. And I'm gonna show you a picture of the fronts. I don't know how I can do that without um, giving away some of the projects. So I'm not going to because it's the pictures around it. Um, there's really good diagrams in here for everything that you put together and I can't show you because obviously then I'd be giving away the patterns but everything looks like it's extremely detailed how you do this how everything works because it is so different we're not used to working from the center out like this um, that I don't think you can mess up I will keep you posted on those socks though on how it goes oh and these were just darling and I don't make too many toys 
but I think I am going to make, why do I not do this right? <laughs> I'm going to make these for me and I'm going to make them in a purpley blue color because when I was in Bali and I went scuba diving, I saw all these beautiful purpley blue starfish and they were huge like this too. I mean, they were really big. And so that would be a nice memento of my trip to have these little starfish scattered in places where I could find them and be like, oh, I remember when I saw them. So, um, yeah, again, this cute little bear. And oh, I'm just going to show it to you. It's, um, it's a little different. So from the center out, and I've not seen that before, the next page is just full of pictures and layouts of where you start, what you're doing, and how to put the whole thing together. Super, super easy. So I thought that was really great. The next section is blankets. And I don't make too many blankets, but I have made a few. And for a baby, I thought this would be a really beautiful blanket. It's the Dahlia blanket. I'm like glaring. Isn't that beautiful? And it's just so simple and it doesn't look like it's complicated and you can probably bang that out in no time flat um, for a baby's gift. So pretty. Uh, let's see, there are, there's another blanket that I liked very much. Um, actually, it's, it's in the shawl section. So, oh, wait, sorry, there's more. This is a cute little baby playmat and again it's like that that star shape easy and something fun I thought anyway um, and again all the diagrams everything is so clearly illustrated that if you process with visually you're gonna understand everything if you process by reading you're gonna understand everything so I thought that was great it got both learners learning types there I really like this Oops. Oh, you know, I have my mouse in the way. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I really can't get through that. I thought that was really pretty. It's very simple. Again, just a stitch and starting from the center out, a little pattern stitch. Just looks like something nice for your couch that you could wrap yourself up with um, at the end of the day. And then this is another cute little one. Why am I into blankets all of a sudden? I don't know. But this is a little blanket for a baby. And... I think it's called the ripple blanket. And what I liked about this is that those ridges, those bumps are going to give extra cushion and it's not just garter stitch. So, you know, if you're tired of garter stitch, something like this might be something that you might want to make for a baby. Um, and it would be soft because it's cushy. Oh, and then they have sweaters. And I do like a couple of these. There's a shrug, which is nice, but... Um, I'm not as interested in that as I am this leaf, leaf yoke sweater. Isn't that pretty cute? I don't know if you can see that. But it's a basic yoke sweater, but I thought it was nice. Um, doesn't seem very complicated. And it's pretty. And so, okay, well, yoke, yoke sweaters, a lot of them are done top down anyway. But this one, I've not seen this done before. This is really cool, and I would like to make this. And I don't even wear a lot of hoodies. You knit this oh, wrong side. Sorry. I don't know when I'm going to get this straight. You knit this from the hood down. And I thought that was really intriguing because I, you know, it's always the hoods last. So I thought that was really, really interesting. And I'm going to show you a better picture because that's just a side view. But the front is really, really very nice. Oh, Darn. Isn't that cute? So, I highly recommend checking this book out. Oh, hold on. There's also tutorials. At the end, there's everything. Circular cast-ons, figure eight cast-ons, disappearing loop cast-ons, how to join your work in the round, how to work with double pointed needles, magic loop, alternating two circulars, um, a note for left to right knitters. I thought this book was really well done laid out nice. It didn't seem like they missed anything. So I did get this from the library um, and I will make those socks from it and then see where I go from there. 
So let me see if that's all that I have right now until we go into the kitchen for healthy tips. Yep, that's it. So I'll catch you in the kitchen. Okay, guess what? I'm not in the kitchen. You know why? Because um, my camera stopped working and it kept saying that my card was full. So I put the card in my computer and I started deleting everything that was on there. And I put it back in, I'm like, okay, great, I can record. And guess what? It's still saying it's full. So I don't have the patience to figure this out. I've gotta get this done. So we're in my living room still. I normally sit over there. Oh God, Never mind. Anyway, oh, I have to tell you, the person who wrote this book is not a female. When I said Daniel, I, I was thinking Danielle in my head, but it's Daniel and it's a man and he wrote a great book. And so every time I said she, please go back and thank he. And I really apologize to him for doing that. I'm really just not with it today and nothing seems to be going quite right. So hopefully we can get this done uh, without too many problems. So anyway, I'm, I'm not, I guess I'm going to have to do this out here. So I'm not going to be cooking for you. And I wasn't going to cook for you anyway. What I wanted to do was just show you um, kind of like an idea. And then what you do is base yours on what I do. It, or not that you have to. You know what I mean? You know, it's, it's an idea. This is what you do. You use this and you use whatever kind of substitute you want, you know, and that's how this recipe works. So first I want to talk to you about uh, cookware though. And the other thing too, I'm not sure what's going on with iMovie, but I'm not synced. And the second segment started to stink, sync and then it went out of sync. So I do not know how to fix all this stuff. And I don't really have a lot of time to figure this out today. So I'm just going to throw it up as it is. Anyway. I basically use cast iron and this is my favorite pan. I use this quite a lot. It's probably only about two inches deep, but I saute all my vegetables in here and the dinner I make for tonight will be made in this pan. Um, I also use stainless steel, but that's it. I don't use Teflon and I don't use aluminum and I don't want manufacturers getting mad at me or getting in trouble. So I'm just going to tell you my thoughts and my views and you are free to make your own decisions on what you do with this information. Um, cast iron pans are very interesting because they can be nonstick, but you have to season them first. So you put vegetable oil on them inside and out, and then you put them in the oven for about an hour. If you happen to rub off the coating, you should re-season your pans. Um, to clean them when you're finished, oh, I didn't bring my scrubby in. Don't use the scrubby start, the, the sub scrubby side of your sponge or any kind of Teflon or steel wool. Really, I need to just go to sleep. Um, don't use anything that's going to scratch the surface because you really want that um, seasoning to stay on there. And it totally makes it nonstick. I cook eggs in there all the time. Nothing ever sticks. It's fantastic. I've had these pans since I lived in Vermont and that's well over 20 years ago when I got them. I mean, they're incredible. and. Um, you just want to keep them in good shape. I tend not to use a lot of metal on metal. Uh, I use wooden spoons in the kitchen quite a lot because they're just better for your pans. You're not going to scrape or uh, put pits and um, big huge gouges in your cookware because it's just not good for it. So season your pan. If however you have uh, hemochromatosis which is a blood disease I think it's a disease where you have too much iron in your blood. My mom had this. So she couldn't eat any other iron. Um, she actually had to take medication for it and I think they even did bloodletting at one point. So you get too much iron in your blood and then you get really sick. I don't have that problem because I'm a vegetarian. I don't eat meat, I don't eat organs, I don't even eat fish. So for me, this is a good way for me to actually get a little bit of more iron into my body. Um, so iron is one of those things you don't want too much, but you want enough. So, you know, I use this in stainless steel and that's it. Oh, the other thing, don't cook tomatoes in these pans because the acid, there's some type of thing that just, it doesn't work out good. You don't want to put acid foods in your stainless, in your cast iron. Stainless steel is a much better place for those. Um, what else did I want to tell you about? I think that's it on stainless steel. So wash them carefully and use them often. They're heavy though, right? You get some, so it's like working out. It's awesome. 
uh, Teflon. I do not use Teflon. And I, I did at one point, but I was very careful about not heating it very high and making sure that I didn't have any scratches or gouges. I always used wooden spoons and things like that. But I just feel there's too, there could be enough of a risk that I just don't want to use them anymore. So I have three of them and they just sit in my cupboard and I'm torn because here is something that can be useful for something. I don't know what, but not cooking. So I haven't figured out what it could be useful for. So I don't really want to give it to um, a charity for someone else to maybe possibly misuse those items. So um, I'm trying to figure out a good thing to do with those. Anybody got any ideas for old pots and pans, what you can do with them? So anyway, um, especially if they're gouged, you don't want that and high heat. And I can't remember if I just said that because this is take two. Sorry. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was, um, aluminum and it, who knows, aluminum may have some associations with Alzheimer's disease. I don't use aluminum. I prefer just stainless and cast iron. I feel that those two are pretty safe. They've been around for a long time and really not very many health consequences that can be happening with those two items. Um, the other two, I don't know. I just, for me, I just stay away from it. And if you are considering changing your um, utensil, your cookware, and you feel like, you know, I don't want to go through all this expense and you have these items, just don't use them at a high temperature and be very careful about the um, scratching issue, okay? All right, so my recipe um, kind of goes like this. I use a lot of onions and I use a lot of garlic. And um, so they're in just about every meal that I make. So I saute onions and I don't use olive oil to saute my food. So we're gonna talk a little bit about oils too. Not a whole bunch because we could be here all day with this. Um, olive oil is fantastic, but I don't use it to cook my food anymore. I use something that it can actually take heat so that I'm not worried about um, changing the, the properties of the oil while I'm cooking and then making it something that's not good for my body. So I have keep a bottle on the counter that I use every day for olive oil in my salads or anything that I'm putting it on last with, not under any heat. And the other types of oil that I use are organic um, sesame oil. Uh, right now I'm using grapeseed oil which I've never used before, but I, I couldn't find the other ones, so that's what I got. And I only buy the small bottles at a time because I don't want them to go rancid. That's the other thing about oils is you don't want to eat them when they're rancid because you can get you sick too. So, you know, if you're going to buy big gallons of it, make sure that something that you and your family can eat rapidly, you know, at least within six months. Um, especially keeping it in a dark place and keeping it cool will help it from not going rancid. So there are oils out there that you can use at a higher heat that aren't going to change their molecular, molecular structure so that you don't wind up getting a, a health issue. Um, and I can probably post a link to some of that. Uh, I'll post a link to that. I did find a nice website that had everything laid out and how you can use it and all this other stuff. So instead of me yammering on for an hour of which ones are good for this and which ones are good for that, I'll just, I'll put that link in there in the show notes. Um, so anyway, I saute the onion and then I'll add anything that's a bigger vegetable. Like tonight I have a zucchini and it's in there so I can't show you now what I showed you before. <laughs> Things just didn't work out. But that's what my friend gave me today was tomato, two types of zucchini, these cute little, um, oh, I didn't show you these. These are eggplants. Aren't they cute? These are Italian eggplants. And they're this beautiful orange color. They almost look like um, persimmons. Aren't they beautiful? Gosh, I'm just, I can't wait to eat them. They're, this is what I'm eating tonight. So I'm going to sa saute these and the onions. And then I also use a lot of um, sun-dried tomatoes. They really have a lot of flavor and you don't need many of them. So um, the bigger, the things that take a little bit longer to cook, like some zucchini, the eggplant, and the onions, I'll saute those. Then I add the garlic later. I don't do it right up front because I like the fresher garlic flavor. It's oh, so good. I used to hate fresh garlic. I couldn't stand it. Had to be cooked or else I wasn't gonna eat it. And then all of a sudden now I'm like, I just need it fresh. I don't know why these things happen, they just do. So the choice is yours, how you, uh, when you put in your garlic. 
And then when those are pretty much cooked and they're kind of nice, um, I'll take a green. So I love kale, um, Swiss chard as well. And then I'll stick that on the top and I'll let that um, cook down just a little bit. I also put lentils in here, which is a great source of fiber um, for those of us who eat lentils and legumes. I showed you chickpeas the other day and now it's lentils, but there are two things that I eat quite a lot of. And I'll stick maybe a cup or three quarters of a cup of cooked lentils in here. And I do cook my lentils with a vegetable broth and this adds a little bit more flavor to them. So they're quite tasty on their own and then they taste really good in here. And this is kind of like a frittata in a way, but the egg actually, I don't put that many in there so it doesn't go all the way to the, down to the bottom. I'll take three eggs and actually tonight I don't have any eggs. I ran out. Um, so I'm just going to have sauteed vegetables and lentils tonight. But um, so I take three eggs and I scramble them and I stick them on the top. And then I'll cook that a little bit until it just sets on the bottom. And like I said, sometimes it doesn't quite get all to the bottom. So you just kind of um, move the spatula around and try to get the egg to move through the dish. Depends on how many vegetables you have. So that's why I say this is not really completely a do this, 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 this. This is just an idea. Take what you have and run with it. So once it's set, then I take it and I put it in the broiler. And because cast iron pans don't have any plastic on them whatsoever, there's no plastic handle, this is all metal, I can just stick that right into my oven on the broil setting and I can broil the top. And it doesn't take long, um, maybe just a minute or two, uh, because it, you're just getting the top part done and it gets a little bit bubbly and brown and it's really, really good and it's very nutritious. There's protein in there, there's fiber in there, there's vegetables in there. Um, so that's what I do with that. I will write out a sample of how this goes together and then, you know, just do, do with what fresh things you have. I go to the market and I look at what's good and I don't really go with a list of things to buy except for onions and garlic and lemons. I make sure I have those things and olive oil. But, you know, it's whatever happens to be fresh and in season at the, at the store because those are going to be the best nutritious things for you to eat because they're, they're picked at the right time, um, they're in season, and they're going to taste the best too. So they're not traveling halfway around the world to get to you. So that's my tip for today on cookware and oils to use and a quick recipe. So I hope you like it. And... Yeah, I don't think there was anything else I was going to tell you. So that's it. I will see you next week. Thanks.